short key diode is also known as option a peltier diode option b shockley diode option c pin diode option d hot carrier diode short key diode is a is having metal semiconductor junction that means one side that is anode part is metal and cathode part is semiconductor so this is a structure of short key diode this is metal anode is taken from this metal and this is n type semiconductor silicon and it is taken as cathode now this is silicon dioxide layer screening layer say auto when a short key diode is in unbiased condition the electrons lying on the semiconductor side have very low energy level when compared to the electrons present in the metal thus the electrons cannot flow through the junction which is called short key barrier short key barrier will appear here short key barrier so electrons from n side cannot cross this barrier called short key barrier if the diode is forward biased electrons present in the n region will get sufficient energy to cross the junction so electrons crossing this junction enter into the metal region these electrons enter into the metal region with a tremendous energy consequently these electrons are known as hot carrier so the diode is also known as hot carrier diode next question which type of power amplifier is biased for operating at less than 180 degree of cycle options are option a class a amplifier option b class b option c class c option d class d so first uh, option class a amplifier is working in the full cycle of input signal so it is working in 360 degree of the cycle cycle of input whereas class b operates for only positive half cycle or 180 degree of the cycle class c amplifier will operate only for an angle that is less than less than 180 degree of the cycle so class c amplifier is the correct option class d is used for pulse application angle is not specified in the case of class d amplifier so correct option is option c the value of degenerative feedback fraction is always option a less than 1 option b equal to 1 option c more than 1 option d none of the above if we consider a feedback amplifier which uses a negative feedback it will contain a forward amplifier with the gain a this will be some transistor amplifier it takes an input xi and produces an output xo so there will be a beta network or feedback network that takes output of the basic amplifier as input and produces a feedback signal that is denoted as xf and this signal is mixed with the source signal so to produce uh, xi so xi is difference between xs and xf now the amplifier gain a is usually much greater than 1 and uh, beta the feedback fraction beta equal to xf divided by beta is xf divided by x not is usually less than 1 so correct option is option a so feedback uh, fraction or degenerative feedback fraction is always less than 1 for a transistor amplifier when we give 10 volt as input voltage it draws 2 milliampere current what is the input impedance option a 5 kilo ohm option b 20 kilo ohm option c 0.2 kilo ohm option d 10 kilo ohm now what is input impedance how will you obtain input impedance of an amplifier for an amplifier with the input voltage vi if it takes a current ia and produces an output voltage v not 
and output current I naught. Input impedance is the impedance at the input terminals. So, Z i is nothing but the ratio of V i and I i. So, it is given that V i equal to 10 volt and draws a current of 2 ampere, 2 milli ampere. Therefore, Z i equal to 10 divided by 2 milli ampere. This is in volt. So, we will get uh, 10 by 2 that is equal to 5 milli when it goes to numerator become kilo. So, 10 raised to 3 ohms. So, that is 5 kilo. So, correct option is option A 5 kilo. Intrinsic standoff ratio eta of a UJT option A RB1 plus RB2 divided by RB1 option B RB1 plus RB2 option C RB1 divided by RB1 plus RB2 option D RB1 plus RB2 divided by RB2. Intrinsic standoff ratio for a UJT is a fraction of uh, base resistances. So, correct option is option C that is RB1 divided by RB1 plus RB2. So, UJT contains only single junction. This is P region. There will be a depletion region here. This terminal is B2 and this terminal is B1. The equivalent circuit of UJT is like this. This junction is represented by a diode and these two base regions are represented by simply taking resistance values and this resistance value is variable RB1. This is RB2. Okay. Now, intrinsic standoff ratio eta is equal to RB1 by RB1 plus RB2. So, correct option is option C. An amplifier has a voltage gain of 150 and beta equal to 110. Calculate the power gain. Power gain equal to P out by P i. So, output power by input power, this ratio is called power gain. Now, we will calculate output power using this formula V naught I naught by V i into I i. And this is voltage gain into current gain. So, V naught by V i is voltage gain into current gain will give power gain. So, voltage gain is given as 150 into current gain. Current gain is uh, beta. Beta equal to current gain that is given as 110. Therefore, this is 150 into beta, 150 into 110. Answer is 16,500. So, correct option is option B. LED is made of option A silicon, option 2 germany option 3 gallium arsenide option d selenium correct option is option 3 that is gallium arsenide compound semiconductors like gallium arsenide gallium arsenide or gallium arsenide phosphide gallium indium arsenide so these materials are used for construction of led the resonant frequency of a parallel tuned circuit is option A, FR equal to 1 by 2 pi RC, option B, FR equal to 1 by 2 pi FC, FR equal to 2 pi FL by R, option D, FR equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC. If you consider parallel tuned circuit, it consists of an inductor and capacitor that are connected in parallel. When we apply an input signal, it will produce a sustained oscillation in the circuit. So, current in the circuit will be oscillatory. If inductor value is L and capacitor value is C, there is at resonance, inductive susceptance will be equal to capacitive susceptance BC. Capacitive susceptance BC. Now, BL equal to 1 by 2 pi FL. 1 by 2 pi FL is BL. Susceptance value is inverse of uh, reactance value equal to BC will be equal to 2 pi FC. So, at resonant frequency, admittance or susceptance value of inductance will be equal to susceptance value of capacitance. Therefore, 1 by 2 pi FR into L equal to 2 pi, 2 pi into FR into C. So, we will get FR square equal to 1 by 4 pi square LC or FR equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC. So, correct option is option D. 
an ideal op amp the output impedance set out will be for an ideal op amp output impedance so impedance across the output terminal set out is taken as 0 ohm for practical uh, op amp for for example 741 ic ic 741 typical value is 72 ohms correct option will be option 2 that is 0 ohm. the collector based junction of a transistor is always option a forward biased option b reverse biased option c unbiased option d none of the above in a transistor that is operating in amplifier or linear region or active region the emitter junction is forward biased emitter junction is forward biased and the collector junction is reverse biased so there will be two junctions emitter junction je and this is collector junction jc base emitter collector this junction is forward biased and this junction is reverse biased for proper op operation as an amplifier emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased so correct option is option a